Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Dare to Dream. I'm very excited. There's so many cool things coming down the pike that I'm going to be telling you about. And also, I have an amazing guest today. Laura Eisenhower is here. She'll be on a little bit later. And today, we're going to be talking about exopolitics, alchemy, metaphysics, and uh, yum, galactic history, which I'm always very hungry for. Dare to Dream podcast won three talk radio positive change awards, won the COVR award for best radio and podcast show. Welp magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it's high ranking under self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. I want to tell you a couple of very cool things we have going on. If you're listening on podcast site or radio or Spotify, et cetera, you might want to head over to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And here's what we have going on there. First of all, there is a live membership. It is set up, ready to rock and roll. And what I'm going to be doing, highly recommend you join the membership, is asking my guests in the future, will they stay after for membership only? and do live Q&A with them. I'm so excited for that, what we're all gonna learn. So you need to be a member to receive that kind of a Benny. And then the other thing that is brand new on the youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger channel is merch. Yep, we've got some very cool merchandise there for you. Clothing, men's, women, unisex, everything uh, that you could want, including a pet t-shirt and coffee mugs and all of that. So the logos are beautiful. I'm very proud of all of what's been created there. And finally, the show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. If you want to find out more about the energy work they do, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, media visibility specialist. Yes, I do speak about shamanism and extraterrestrials out in the world. And additionally, I do media work. I help people to write their books. I take authors' books to a guaranteed international bestseller. And I also do some publicity work for spiritual messengers, if we're a fit. So if you would like anything around that, and if you're ready to become visible, in what you do out in the world, because that is why you came here, is to have a voice and to sing out loud. Let me teach you how. I have templates. I have videos. It is my gift to you. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest, Laura Eisenhower, is an internationally acclaimed researcher, author, and medical and intuitive astrology, known for her groundbreaking work in exopolitics, alchemy, metaphysics, and galactic history. As the great-granddaughter of President Dwight David Eisenhower, she reveals hidden exopolitical information about his administration, shedding light on topics long held in secrecy. Laura's profound insights are shaped by her wilderness adventures, psychic development, and deep understanding of Gaia Sophia and our divine blueprint. We'll be diving into that, guiding us towards higher earth energies and unity consciousness. You can learn more about her on her website. Go to cosmicgaia.org. And we'll also be speaking a little bit about two of the places around the world where both Laura and I are speaking this year, so you can get more. And with that, I welcome the amazing Laura Eisenhower to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thanks for having me. Yay. Yeah. It's great to have you here. And so hold up your book because that's not even in your bio and folks should know that your book exists. And Oh, if- right. I didn't get a chance to grab it here. Hold on. Okay. And ah! I would have to run in and grab it. I thought it was right here. Well, tell us the name. Awakening the Truth Frequency. Okay, beautiful. And of course, I could pull it up on this end too later on um, or just put a link when I put this out there. So- Beautiful book, beautiful book. I want to start. I love that this is in your book. 
And it's this idea of Gaia, Gaia Sophia and also our divine blueprint, Christ Sophia, and how this influences or not Earth's evolution and our role in it. So can you explain that concept? Yeah, so understanding our galactic history and how this planet became what it is, is, is very much about the restoration of our DNA template, the tree of life, and the seven root races, the five cloister races, and how seven plus five equals 12. It's like the unity consciousness is really about switching each other on and repairing our DNA. Um, and it has been under attack. We have been compromised. And this originates from before we sunk down into this lower harmonic universe. And that's where the galactic history comes in. So what happened to our ability to hold a 12 strand and beyond um, DNA expression. What, what sort of galactic wars um, and scenarios uh, like were, were the roots of what we're experiencing in the here and now. Right. So that's a lot about what I go into in my book and how the Sophianic energy uh, has been creating corrections and how that mother energy has been anchored back into the planet mm -hmm in this window period that we call ascension. And so there's a lot of different indications of this. Uh, the Venus transits, the sun moving through the 13th sign of Phaecus and how that relates to the ether. And when we look at, you know, the invasion or attack on our capacity to switch each other on and rebuild this 12 strand DNA, um, you know, looking at the Marian Holocaust, the Atlantean cataclysms, and a lot of different events that took place in our, you know, history here on Earth uh, created this covert shadow government, I guess you could say, but it's bigger than just government, right? That um, is working with these lower entities or beings that are very vampiric mm -hmm. that have utilized dark technology to siphon and harvest our energies and block us from our galactic memories. And so those areas of our DNA, they call junk and learning about what that really is, gives us such a bigger picture about who we are, what our origins are, what our galactic history is and what's taking place on this planet. So it's such a huge thing to just sort of like be able to summarize. Right. But yeah. uh, the divine template, if we look at it based in integration of polarity, you know, we've been dealing with duality. We've been doing uh, dealing with imbalance in a lot of programs and reversal uh, technologies that have been put in the planetary grid network that have made it very hard for humans to switch these dormant strands on. So who are the beings behind this? Uh, so factions of the Anunnaki, fallen angelics, and how that stepped down from the Lyran Wars and the Orion Wars into, you know, this planetary system is how we can begin to uh, you know, understand the tactics and mechanisms they use to keep us uh, in a state of disempowerment and amnesia and disconnect from the growth periods and what is happening on a cosmic scale with the planetary alignments and what this window period really holds for us to be able to begin to switch all this back on. This is why this window is so targeted with, um, you know, new world order and psyops and all these different narratives and things being steered social engineering agendas in order to really stunt our growth and keep us from what is available. And so I well, really, go let me ask you, let me ask yeah. you, where do you get your information from? Well, I I'll just leave it at that a little open-ended, but it, are these, are these psychic awarenesses? Are these uh, in-depth connections and communications with other beings? Is Are these things that started out with your great-grandfather and secrecy was revealed? How does this manifest for you? And I know before we started, you talked about being, you know, that you speak from a stream of consciousness. So I just like to pull back the curtain and learn more. Yeah. No, I know. I need to be <laughs> like, okay, like, let's break this down a little bit more. Okay, because it's such an enormity of a topic, right? So it's a mixed 
bag, I guess you could say. I mean, I was very aware of my mission um, from the very get-go, like as a child. And it relates to Eisenhower and being born into this family. And I get into that in my book. Ah, so a lot came through as a child. Like I, I got a lot of downloads and I was really just diving deep into like what has happened. I I could tell there was you know, programmings and just things that uh, we all experience that make us question uh, what we're being fed and, and what we're being exposed to constantly. Um, very often those inklings in us are suppressed and they're labeled as a dysfunction or that something's wrong with you if you question it or if you have an emotional reaction. And so my quest as a child and growing up was to sort of uncover you know, what those feelings are and, and what those intuitive hits or downloads were uh, and to take it seriously so that I wouldn't um, lose that connection, which we all lose as children, right? Through indoctrination or through um, stigmas or projections or labels being thrown. And also the labels that we gladly uh, might adopt and 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 take on as a false identity. So I, I just have always felt that there wasn't a whole lot of room for soul development and and growth and and understanding of, you know, what is within us to get in touch with. So a lot of downloads came in and uh, a lot about uh, my great grandfather and his presence being very close to me. I was pre-targeted before birth to go off planet. I wasn't in any projects or programs, but there was a tension on me at a very young age. So when it finally manifested that there was this recruitment attempt in 2006 to go off planet, I began to learn a lot about timelines, a lot about what took place in his administration. And through the assistance I feel of him and guides and a lot of synchronicities, um, I was able to really connect a lot of dots. And once I became public, that's when I met other whistleblowers and other experiencers and individuals that helped me to understand the bigger picture of everything mm -hmm. um, as far as what took place after the Second World War, what took place in his administration, and my exploration of ET government treaties and understanding that there's been a lot of false narratives being steered helped me to get to the bottom of it all, which I expose in my book. The other research that is very compatible with the downloads I was getting is energeticsynthesis.com, Lisa Renee's work, Kelantic Science. And uh, yeah, just uh, like you said, wilderness adventures. I, I meditated and worked my sort of clairvoyant energy for a couple of years uh, at a psychic institute. And I know a lot of people have been to that particular um, program. Um or, or institute or whatever you want to call it. I don't like to say the word program because it sounds like programming. It's more about dismantling any kind of program. Um, so a mixture of all of that, right? So the reason my book's called Awakening the Truth Frequency is because at, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing that we stay in touch with, that you know where you need boundaries, that that you take what resonates and 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 get are very careful of giving your power away. Mm -hmm. This is a time of really you know, learning to fall back on ourselves. And I think this is why there's such an increase in people telling their stories of surviving cults or ritual abuse and just MK Ultra. It's like, wow, yo, this is so prevalent. And and even if you weren't a part of all that, just being born into this world and um, what we're up against and the weaponry uh, that is in disguise that we don't realize is coming through the media, is coming through uh, entertainment industry, coming through the medical industry, where a lot of well-intentioned people are really, really caught up in that uh, and, um, and make a lot of money off of it, but don't realize uh, um, there's a much bigger picture. So we need to understand the root of things like anger and depression and these imbalances and begin to give it more of a voice uh, mm -hmm. and not suppress the children that are coming in and the gifts that they have and the leadership that they have and the guidance that they can provide and stop with this authority and tyrannical control and limitation that's been placed upon people and begin to, you know, really unpack that through getting to know ourselves. Are you and aware of your own great. galactic history of your galactic lineage? What uh, galaxies, universes, beings you might have been that helps make sense for you to who you are today? Say that again. Is it, 
Do I yeah. know that about me or is it helpful for others? Or Do you know about you what what your galactic history is? I have had a lot of readings done on me and I have heard all sorts of things and mostly connects to the Sophianic energy, the Magdalene flame, um, and just being connected with, you know, the, the, the Sophianic corrections. Um, so the guardians, uh, and how something was presented to Eisenhower and his administration, um, from star beings that call themselves the guardians that are also connected to the Lakota, Dakota, um, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota people. And that uh, the guardians said that there would be a migration of souls coming in that would be a part of the great awakening. And this was to offset some surrender agreements that took place with the dark side that didn't happen under Eisenhower that has been covered up. So a lot of false narratives say that he signed treaties when actually that is not the case. And my book goes into depth about that. But they said that they would bring a member uh, uh, into the family that would expose things that he warned us about in his final speech. So somebody handed me that book. They're like, I think they're talking about you because uh, they said that he was briefed about a descendant that would be born. And I'm not not saying that other family members aren't doing profound missions and important work. But she said specifically about you because you're talking about, uh, you know, these different layers of the military industrial complex secret space programs and they thought and others have thought and remote viewers have helped me to understand that the reason I was targeted to go off planet was to derail uh, the mission that I have to bring truth and light to some of the things that took place in his administration that have been held in secrecy that have been kind of covered up by false narratives, casting blame on him when in actual fact, he worked very closely with Val Thor and set up things like the white hats, the earth Alliance and the, um, Ike's force and he invaded Dulce underground base and tried to take out the grays and, and there's, there's a, a, a lot more to come to the surface. So I tell everybody just to discern this and that. So I've been told I'm from Venus, um, the guardians, uh, but that on a deeper soul level, it's always been connected to like the mother energy and the Sophianic energy. And I think we all carry that. And the more we recognize that our deeper soul journey holds the spark of that Sophianic energy to do the repair work, we, you know, recognize that um, we have our own unique expression of it. And in coming together in unity consciousness, we can begin to integrate these fragmented energies and help switch each other on to rebuild that 12 strand DNA and unscramble the junk and recognize, um, you know, the work that I think we're all tasked to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, in the beginning, you mentioned the Anunnaki, and I want to go down that road a bit. So when I was interviewed on a really huge show recently, I know I know history, I can speak some galactic history myself. And certainly I can speak to Anunnaki galactic history, but it just so happened this host said, what are they doing now? And I'm like, hmm not my wheelhouse. So I would love to hear from you about that. And let me preface it by saying, Laura, that my understanding was that the Anunnaki's who came here and messed around with the 12 strand DNA were eventually recalled because it was not okay to do anything to a planet that is supposed to be free will, choice, free choice. And so the rest of the Anunnaki's, if you will, recalled them back. And of course, we had other races seed us to help us with various things. I don't know much after that, and I don't know if you even agree with that piece of history. So can you share about the Anunnaki? And definitely, please, what are they doing now? Where do they live, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, what are they doing now and where do they live? Uh, well, Nibiru has always been associated with the Anunnaki and the hybrids. I mean, they live on Earth and those that, you know, work with them are working with the controller agendas. I mean, they're they they're enforcing the controller agendas, the Sons of Belial and the Black Suns. So, you know, this all is like the Orion group and the Enki and Enlil factions of the Anunnaki uh, have a lot to do with like timelines and not everybody has 
the same information when it comes to these characters. So it's very difficult to speak mm -hmm. on without invalidating somebody else's work. Right. And I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I have my thoughts and opinions. There's no doubt that there's these, um, controller agendas and these controller agendas have, uh, targeted, uh, certain stargates on the planet, uh, with reversal technologies that are like a, harvesting station that uh, work with the planetary grid network and overlay upon it in order to uh, engineer like artificial timelines. So the manipulation of the planetary grid network goes back thousands and thousands of years. And some of these hybrids with humans and some of the things that they you know attempted to do in order to um, seed humans uh certain groups with with their agenda uh, was to utilize trauma-based mind control to keep them locked into uh this sort of reptilian genetic mm -hmm. even though they had orifim and the orifim consciousness holds the energy of like um the higher strands of dna right so so if you're looking to control somebody uh it's not just through suggestion, it's through trauma, right? So when we look at the multi-generational trauma-based mind control, uh, where did you know that originate? I'm not blaming it on Enki or Enlil, but I do know that um, there was manipulation of our DNA and there was different um, agendas or, or ideas that both of these brothers had. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I think it really relates to the highest factions of Illuminati's plan for like Earth takeover. And um, but the stories connected to them and their redemption or the way these beings have changed uh, can be very different than the humans that are operating under, you know, some sort of belief system or ideology, you know, like the worship of Lucifer, like the Luciferian rebellions and how that might relate. So when you're stepping down into lower density and you're dealing with hybridization, you're also dealing with a lot of imposters that are using names that one has to consider, right? So even uh, the name of Yahweh or, you know, some of the names that we hear about um, Archangel Michael even, uh, or Thoth, um, there, there's like multi levels of all of this. So the negative alien agenda, um, I feel is more like a alliance coming from many, many different groups and races. And it's more based in like hybridization and, and energies that have like stepped down. Um, their original form, as far as their intent, you know, could be, you know, very different. And that's why, uh, I don't say a whole lot about Enki or Enlil. I focus more on the Sophianic energy because that's where I feel like the correction is coming from. Because if there are controller agendas and there have been dark mother reversals and there has been manipulation of our DNA and the planetary grid network, and if one attempted to wipe out what they thought was a negative, which would be Enlil with the flood, um, but others see him as sort of the controlling jealous God of uh, the Old Testament. And some are saying Enki is the one that compromised our DNA, but others are saying, you know, it's like, I don't want to get entangled in all that because I know what my focus is, which are the corrections, which is the Sophionic energy and how that's grounded back into the planet and how that also redeems the fallen angelics and redeems this through the clearing of these energies from the stargates and from the planetary grids and from our own inner being through removing the frequency fences and the net that we've been encased in that have kept us um beneath these lower creator gods that have manipulated religion relip, uh, manipulated every power structure in order to keep us dumbed down and enslaved so to get entangled in the who or what or where uh there's tablets sumerian tablets there's you know people that say those aren't you know true or real and you know there's a lot to de delve into and i think I really break it down as best as I possibly can in my book that I can't really summarize in an interview um, about everything you just asked. So that's not really the best answer because I've been having so many conversations about this with people recently that, uh, you know, and, and a lot of negative feedback, because if I say this, I'm discrediting this person's work. If I say that, then it's an attack on them. And at this point, I'm just like, whoa, 
and I'm not going to silence myself, but I'm kind of like fresh out of all that. And a lot of like messages coming at me, like, and, and I'm not, like, not going to be silenced, but uh, I know where my mission and focus is. And it's not Enki or Enlil and it's not Anunnaki. It's understanding the archetype of the Venus energy and even Anana and going like through this process of going into the underworld to move through the gatekeepers, to be a part of this regenerative energy of correction related to the Venus transits that this window period is all about in order to help us to purify our inner elementals and begin to break down the dark technologies that have been um, harming us and poisoning us and limiting our capacity to awaken. Amazing. Okay, so let, let's deep dive into that then, because I think corrections is the name of the game. It's a beautiful thing, especially right now with everything going on that can feel very anxiety producing and uh, oppressive, uh, powerless. There's many things <clears throat> I know people are experiencing being alive at this time. And I also like the idea of not suppressing one's voice ever. Yeah, I could speak a lot about that as well. I definitely uh, came here to sing out loud and there's lots of reasons for that. So let's go into the Venus and how this Venus energy is can be used, is being used as creating an opening for corrections to be made and specifically about what corrections. Well, the uh, Venus transits um, are very much about this. Uh, astronomers and astrologers have noted that the transit of Venus and the orbit of Venus forms a perfect pentagram. So when we look at the inverted pentagram, which is so prevalent in symbolism and Satanism, um, that inversion has the fifth element going into the ground, right? With the, uh, and, and that really is symbolic of the dark mother reversals and just sort of like the harvesting and siphoning and you know, being our masters and, and, and they're not our masters, right. But being the controllers and what our controllers do, they limit our capacity to understand how to be a Christed individual or do the soul alchemy or be empowered. It's everything about what's outside of us and what we either worship or what we uh, regurgitate based on what, um, you know, we, we, we study or learn, there's not a whole lot of room for self-development or really understanding our deeper soul journey, our galactic history, um, and all these things that, you know, we, we, you know, need to explore in order to, you know, break all that down. And so, um, it's, uh, uh, you know, Venus that creates five equally spaced alignments over a period of eight years and draws the perfect hidden and secret symbol of the five pointed star. And sort of like, if we look at the last Venus transit in 2011, 12 period in June, that was a prophesized time of like awakening. This was also a time where the ti uh, the timeline shifted and the sun began to move through the 13th sign of Phaecus and the mother energy got anchored back on the planet. So I feel that after the Atlantean cataclysms and a lot of the different you know, wars that have taken place that really threw the planetary body off its access and, you know, pyramid technology went offline. We lost our capacity to access our galactic memories. We're born with amnesia and just like in this human form with functioning, you know, at a very low strand level, like two strand, three strand DNA. These corrections are a part of the cosmic intelligence, just like we naturally, when we're injured, work to heal ourselves. So does creation. So if there's been galactic wars, there's been this battle between service to self, service to others, or however you want to look at it, um, beings that are vampiric, uh, that are more predatory versus those that stay aligned and stay connected to the regenerative power of source, that this correction is to restabilize the planet, bring it back into alignment so that the galactic cores of Andromeda and Milky Way become one again, which is what the Venus transits and those corrections and the healing of the planetary grid network were able to bring about. So with the sun moving through a phaecus, this represents the healing of the mitochondrial DNA, which is connected to ether, which is connected to the fifth element. And so Venus correcting these reversals, boom, begins to also uh, allow the flow of energy from the reversal technologies that had targeted the dodecahedron platonic solid and the ether element to go in reversal spin so that it can't purify and cleanse the nucleic acids of our DNA. So we pass genetic damage from generation to generation. Um, we're exposed to things that we can't seem to release 
um, without having, you know, some doctor give us chemo or some drug or just have some degenerative, you know, disability um, that is in now in the doctor's hands, right? Unless we take it upon ourselves to uh, do the healing work and to understand, you know, these uh, vulnerabilities and dispositions that we might be born with or that we might uh, end up picking up on because of our health, our diet and the environment around us and all that we're being thrown. So this ether element really helps that purification and that removal. But I think the most important thing that it dismantles is the mind control and the social engineering, because that is what keeps us in the lower vibration. And that is what AI requires to assimilate us and to separate us from the soul matrix and take us down an artificial timeline into transhumanism. So these corrections help us to be the override frequency. And it's really speaking your truth. Fifth element, fifth chakra, right? If we are like clear in this area, we're bringing in messages from our higher mind, from our higher wisdom. And, you know, when the hurts and frequency that we are embodying and the tools and modalities that we work with that can help to offset these lower vibrations and hurts frequencies that are lower, 5G, you know, all this stuff. Um, we begin to dismantle the dark weaponry. And so all of that is happening. All these corrections have happened on a cosmic and earthly scale. Question is, can we remove ourselves from the dependency bond with an inverted system? Can we begin to cut the cord so we can stand in alignment and allow this purification to enter our beings and clear the nanoparticles, the mind control? Can it dismantle all that we're carrying around that keeps us toxic and keeps us limited? And so that's where the miracle vibration comes in and where rapid healing comes in and ascension symptoms come in, I feel. Yeah, that's, wow, that's so powerful. And with all of this going on, is there a way, so if people want to step out of what they've been in, this vortex of madness, and they really want to harness this Venus energy to live a much more free and a not implanted life, a healthy life, less dependent on anything at all outside of air and water kind of thing. What can they do to align themselves or get themselves ready to receive that, to be it? Well, it, looking at the North nodes is a really important thing. So it represents the growth period of humanity and how that relates to our own personal chart can help us to see how is that affecting us. So right now the North node has been in Aries and that's like the growth period. Chiron has also been in Aries. This last eclipse, April 8th, had four planets, including a retrograde Mercury in Aries. So, okay, the growth period is Aries. What are we looking at? We're looking at the wounded Aries, the wounded ego, the wounded warrior, the wounded persona, right? Like, and it's going to manifest differently for people. Uh, the planetary alignments that are happening are always here to help us and heal us because it's part of the greater cosmic intelligence that is healing the planetary system and and the mother earth energy uh and 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 us being a part of that us being replicas of the planetary good grid network on a dna and chakra level so the planetary alignments are weaponized in the form of psyops to throw us into the shadow and, and inverted expression of it so that we don't um initiate and go through the growth periods that they represent so that it's hijacked and we're giving our power away we're thrown into survival or fear and we see that with all these different tactics that they're using that come through the news so when we look at like the North Node, it's like, okay, where have we been wounded in this area? Can we be the the warrior that's finding the, the healing tools and modalities or finding the self-honesty and clarity to look at those wounds? Where have I been programmed? Where have I been um, limited? Where have I invested in something that I thought was truth and found out that it wasn't? Can I be honest with myself versus the lower octave or the lower expression of Mars Aries, Chiron, Mars being the ruler of Aries, where it's all about competition. It's being warlike. It's taking your wounds out on others. It's hurting others because you're hurt, wow. you know, and it's just staying in this divide and conquer patterning that is getting worse and worse because they're like, oh, this is an opportunity for people to be like, wait a second. It's a time to deprogram and awaken. So of course we're looking at our wounds. Chiron rules the the 13th sign, which is connected to the ether. So we have to be transparent and willing to say, this is where I've been wounded. I'm going to be holding myself accountable. This is what I can do to find myself, to go through that dark night of the soul, to, to embrace the process, not fear it, and, and really get more closer to the self instead of further away. So further away would mean don't look at it, mask it, just keep going for the addictions, keep you know, going for uh, the dominant 
sort of ego expression of my way or the highway, or I'm going to hurt you if you don't agree with me, or I'm just going to be in the divide and conquer. Um, that's not unity consciousness, right? So that would be the lower aspect of negative ego of unresolved ego wounds, which is what the growth period of humanity is. And it's going to now move into Pisces soon, North Node Pisces. So where is our creative imagination in infected? Reflecting on the South Node Virgo, how has that impacted our physical health? So didn't mean to jump ahead, but the South Node opposite the North Node Aries is Libra. So in order to embrace the growth period of the Aries Chiron, we have to reflect upon the South Node, which has to do with um, something that uh, we're moving on from, but we're not releasing ourselves from. We're just looking at it. Are our relationships imbalanced? Are we allowing people to walk all over us? Are we just people pleasing the shadow side of Libra or are our relationships in harmony? And are they able to walk with us when we work on healing ourselves? When we, when we integrate that Aries energy, are we able to stand our ground? Do we know how to say no? Do we know how to break up with toxic relationships, partners, careers, and jobs and all of that, right? So now we're moving into Pisces reflecting on Virgo, which has to do with physiology, physical health, and, and, and those are opposite each other. So physical health is usually a manifestation of things that are hiding in the unseen realms of our unconscious. So the Pisces energy asks us to look at, you know, what programmings are there? What belief systems are there that your body doesn't like? Because you wouldn't have physical symptoms unless your body knew something was wrong. Or if you're letting go of it, your body is readjusting and going through a, a healing crisis or process that is taking you somewhere higher. Can we be really aware of that? And 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 that is uh, focusing on the creative imagination. Are your visions and dreams solid? Are you consistent in expressing them and in working to manifest them? Or has it been infected by a propaganda or a narrative that is causing that vital part of your energy to be siphoned and used to enable a timeline in a future that you don't want to see because it's a script that you're believing in or adopting or fearing or um, forming a, a relationship with to, to a detrimental degree. So everything is designed on a cosmic and earthly level to heal us, to awaken us, to repair us. And, and we just need to be very aware of the tactics being used to keep us stuck in the shadow side to where we're looking for outer solutions to get us out of the discomfort and misery that it brings up through pharmaceuticals, through drugs and alcohol, through emotional eating, and really just say, oh my gosh, I'm going to change my life and, and work on healing this physical vessel, ancestral patterns, programs, you name it, detoxing from all the bad food. And that's what really doing the work is. So being mindful every day, you know, when you're triggered, what are you doing? Are you lashing out at others? Are you grabbing something that is more harmful than beneficial? Or are you blessing yourself and giving yourself something beautiful and something healing and something loving and cutting yourself a lot of slack? I mean, we've been so messed with. It's so easy to just be so hard on the self. And I'm really good at doing that myself. So I, I'm listening to, yeah, like take your own advice, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I have seen this play out. I mean, it's amazing to hear you talk about this. I have literally just seen on the Aries side, when you're talking about the wounds and how people go after people, there's somebody in the spiritual world that I know and had, um, I'm not involved with it, but I witnessed other spiritual people go after this person and anyone connected with this person in ways I found so shocking. I can't even imagine investing my energy in those ways. And it was so dark. Uh, so I that makes so much sense. This literally has been playing out. And then as far as the physical, the coming into the Pisces with the Virgo and um, looking at the physical, I think what you're saying is so important. And it's literally something I've been thinking about which is, um, cause I have some bone and joint things going on and they've been going on and God knows I work with every healer and taken everything, you know, good and natural and, and it persists. And it just came to me the other day, you know, the one thing I've never done is have no attachment to what's happening to completely lovingly accept everything happening in my body and to talk to my body in ways like, unlike how I have been talking to it, because I have been frustrated, right, big time, that it doesn't operate in the way I'm, I'm used to it operating, very strong, you know, great constitution and all of that. And so I'm amazed that this is coming up. 
and that we can invest I th ways. I mean, this is the suit that is taking us through however many decades each of us has left. And to me, this suit is really important to be strong and to be healthy. And I know for one, I, I'm i in like whatever it takes to get to the other side, but I do want to have a lot of compassion right now. I think that is so key yeah. to looking at that sort of thing. I was even asking my body today about eating, like what, what is it you want to eat? And I was really surprised. Um, but I will tell you this, because I thought this was fascinating when I was talking to my body today, it was saying I that it, it, it doesn't like being in this earth experience. And I was like, really? It was like, yeah, it's really heavy here. I'm not liking this. I'm like, oh, this is new information for me. Okay. What would you like instead? I mean, we're going to be here for a while, but what would you like instead? And it was an amazing dialogue that took place. That's so wild. Yes, totally. And it's, and, and, and that's so key, you know, the dialogue, it's like, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's your body. Uh, I mean, our your bodies, you know, have signals, you know, a pain or, or just where energy is just uh, concentrated in a certain place. It wants release. It wants a voice. It wants to, um, I mean, it's just an opportunity to get closer to ourselves. And we uh, have been so sort of trained and conditioned to just go to the doctor or make this go away. And, and not to say that doctors and a lot of people out there aren't, you know, super helpful, but where do we lose ourselves in the process? How much are they actually really working with us and helping us to understand the root of it and the energy behind it and the thought forms or belief systems um, that just need to just be heard and known? And I remember, you know, uh, I, I had a creepy doctor growing up, so I refused to go to the doctor. <laughs> it, was sort of, it was sort of a blessing in disguise, but I'm like, mom, I'm not going. I don't care how sick I am, just not going to the doctor. Um, and I was too young to be able to, I, you know, nothing horrific happened, but it was enough for me to just be like, oh. Mm -hmm. And so every time, you know, a physical symptom would come up, I would, I would, I, I just didn't know what to do except for just hold it, touch it, talk to it. And, um, and then later in life, I, I sort of remembered that. And I had a really, really bad knee injury. I dislocated my knee and I just went hiking and I'm like, didn't wear the brace. I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt. And I went dancing and I'm like, really messed up my knee. Like really, like it was chronic pain. It was killing me. And I was just crying. It was like hurt so bad. And I wasn't really taking anything to make the pain go away. But I just sat there and I just held it and I just talked to it and I just listened to it. And I felt like all this energy releasing from it. And like literally the pain never came back ever. I never even did anything. I didn't even put the brace on. Um, it just went away. And, I, and I'm like, okay, that's either a coincidence or, uh, of course, it's not a coincidence. But, uh, and I think that's so important is to just give voice, right? Even our anxiety. A lot of times those are downloads that are coming in that we're not giving a voice to. We're used to being silenced. Or what do people think if I say this? But we can't catch the root or reason behind that block. We just feel the sensation. But when we stop and say, where's that coming from? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I tried to say something similar, I got just shut up and laughed at. I mean, those are just examples. So whether it's, you know, mental, emotional, physical, it's all connected. Right. And the physical is the final frontier uh, of where, you know, pain or dis-ease goes when we didn't have a chance to process it. When when we moved through it too quickly because we had to go to school, we had to just perform. We just had to play human. But when we give ourselves the time and opportunity to be like, okay, I'm ready to unlock this and really pay attention to what my body is manifesting, that's when we go into the opposite because Virgo is physical health and physiology. We go into the Neptune, into the creative imagination. Where was that um, infiltrated by outer authority, belief systems, negative um, energies that we just like picked up that we just didn't have a chance to you know, process that our body is now holding and containing? And where, you know, food or, or addiction to certain things, um, you know, kind of keep alive, but like, uh, and, and eventually worsen, right? And so a lot of healers out there and a lot of new t uh, healing tools and modalities that aren't so new that are just coming more to light that have been around before are going to make it a lot easier. Um, and looking at the chart is really helpful. So the medical side of things, right? So bones and joints are connected to Saturn and um, knees are connected to Aquarius and some of the angles, uh, you know, can show like, okay, where does this originate? 
how can a person move from the challenge of where it's uh, keeping one in a loop or in pain to its higher expression of where the conversation between these two, you know, celestial bodies can come more into harmony because they're connected to our organs. They're not just planets that are outside. They're connected to our organs, you know, and our chakras. So oh my that's God, all- you should do a book about that. That would be an amazing book about a particular body location and what that's connected to and why. It's like the upgraded Louise Hay book. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do. Oh, gosh, I've been- I touched upon it in this book and it would be great to expand upon it more. I'm sure somebody, I know I do have books where, yeah, it, it it's, it's, there's so much there already, but, um, I would get it. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um, it's, so, it's interesting to see the correlation. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you mentioned also earlier about Inanna and can you incorporate that also about how this all unfolds and how we use this and what we should be aware of and how it's impacting us. Well, I just think the archetype of the, you know, feminine uh, in its relationship with Venus is just very interesting. And the Venus transits in the correction. So when you look at the different archetypes of the feminine, it always involves going into the underworld, whether it's Persephone being abducted by Hades and Anna going through the seven gates of hell and meeting the dark sister at the bottom and being, you know, and, and, and coming back out, um, <clears throat> the Magdalene energy, uh, just the whole idea of, you know, the underworld and, and the mother womb, the creative cauldron of creation and, 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 you know, how patriarchal energies or dark Lords have been very much controlling, you know, that. And when we look at archons and the Akamoth energy, which is when Tiamat exploded, that Akamoth energy, that Sophianic energy fragmented and was, utilized and and harnessed in the 2d realm in order to use that womb energy to create parasitic you know energies and archonic forces uh and and um how it harnessed the 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 mother womb the stargates on the planet um to really you know like mess with the body that we've all inherited right so we're carrying um you know that and also the corrections within us. So as we, you know, come into alignment and break free of the things that keep us, you know, in that um, energetic dependency bond with something inverted because we we believe in the trickster and the facades and all the ways that it keeps us um, attached, uh, you know, then regeneration happens, birthing happens, creativity, you know, flows right and so a lot of people experience that um but like where are we being compromised where are those gifts and abilities being used where where is that point in which you know when it's time to break the bond right you've developed enough of those skills and abilities you're a manifester you're very very creative but where are you being compromised to uh lose your sense of integrity and begin to comply and consent to things that are detrimental and exploitive of the vulnerabilities of humanity when they're being thrown a lot of fear tactics, right? So this was a big breaking point in this window period, uh, what happened in 2019, 2020, right? Mm. What people were going to decide with all of that. And that really marked a really significant time in this window period of these corrections where here's the breaking point. Here's where it's all going to come to the surface and where we're going to be able to look at the deeper layers of how this has been played out um, throughout history in different ways to keep us harnessed in. So it's not just the mother womb, it's our energies being siphoned, it's our womb energy being used, and it's our dark night of the soul and our willingness to go into that dark, to reclaim that dark, to c- reclaim the soil, the womb, to be able to plant seeds and generate a future from our higher mind and our intuition and from our creative imagination that is our birthright to discover and awaken to, you know, that to me is the true awakening. When we realize, whoa, that is what's being targeted. They would not have any power unless they stole that power, unless they tricked us out of it because they compromised their DNA on purpose. These controller groups run on 10 strand, 11 strand, and that's the part of the planetary stargate that they occupied and put their reversal technologies. And then the frequency fences in our DNA and that we've been encased in um, has been to help us keep coming back so that we finally break the programming and bust through the net and, uh, and, 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 and not continually to be endlessly recycled. So mm. here's the chance to just be like, oh, wow, OK, this is what's been going on. And um, and then, wow, we're a part of that reclamation, that mother energy being anchored and grounded in union with the father 
which is our divine template of this hierogamic union that is the whole, uh, I mean, I, I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but that Christ Sophia, right? So that's like the electric magnetic energies. That's part of the planetary grid network. It's part of our divine blueprint and patriarchal programs and any form of imbalance. It doesn't matter what side you're on, but as long as you're choosing a side and you're in divide and conquer, these archonic forces and control mechanisms, we will constantly be vulnerable to. So the integration of polarity, which the North and South node give us, an experience on a soul level to complete um, will help us to begin to remove the barriers and it manifests as gatekeepers in our life. You know, how do we remove it? Like surgically, it's very often just the people we meet in our lives that it's like, are you going to allow that person to control you to vampire off of you? Yeah. So uh, the micro steps that we take to remove ourselves from control or forces that are conduits of our conic energies, you know, is the first step to overriding the gatekeepers and the fences and the limitations that then, you know, translate into how we dismantle the dark weaponry that is targeting humans to stay in that lower vibration. And again, it's not about gender. It's not about, it's just about divide and conquer and, and imbalance. So with many, many ways and tactics, uh, that dynamic is being encouraged, uh, amongst us. So whether that's a gatekeeper, whether it's, you know, just shutting off the television, whether it's just, you know, knowing, you know, what you want to take in and what, you you don't as far as belief systems that neptune energy your creative imagination is either going to get grounded and manifest as your dreams and visions which many manifest or it's going to be infected and and holding um you know the dark agenda that you're enabling without realizing it and that's the whole idea of choosing not to consent anymore they wouldn't be able to even engineer these artificial timelines if we weren't in agreement to it on some level mm -hmm. so yes yes Definitely. And when you bring up Magdalene, I want to take this around full circle to Glastonbury. And, and somebody was just telling me Glastonbury is known as the throat chakra, the heart center of the world. And I know that Magdalene had a strong presence there. And so you're speaking there. And uh, just talk a little bit about that. Do you, I don't even know if you know what you're going to be talking about. But Anything about the trip coming up, I will be there also in September. I will have a link in the show notes for folks to register and join us and many other phenomenal presenters. So what do you think about the upcoming September in Glastonbury? Well, I'm really excited. I was there last year and it's a very incredible place to be. Uh, yeah, very strong Magdalene energy, just the whole maiden mother crone. And, and that's what I'm going to get into the different, uh, you know, goddess energies there danu ariadne rhiannon bridget Hecate, magdalene uh guinevere and arthur and just you know all the uh the deeper layers of of what this place represents the ley lines the michael mary lines how that connects to you know cornwall avery henge and glastonbury where that has been you know messed with and where there's been a lot of overlays uh and rewritten um stories uh that not necessarily need to be negated but you know i i just uh know that there's just a lot about this particular place that um uh is being like reawakened and a lot of planetary grid healing has taken place in this area to restore that uh, sacred union bond of the Albion body and the Cathar body and how that relates to our divine blueprint and the activations that this uh, land and the wells and the waters and 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 all that's running underground as far as the um, the water energy. I mean, it's just like immense. So mm. I'm going to get into the 13 dragon beings um, and the rise of King Arthur with the sacred union with Guinevere and the Mary uh, Sophia lineage and the reunion of like true sacred union and how us as a humanity are like really awakening to that. And yeah. So. Yeah. That sounds exciting. That sounds amazing. And I'm, it's so cool that you were there last year. I've been many times uh, to England, but I have not been to this area. So I am excited. I've seen the pictures. It looks stunning I can feel the vibration. So folks, if you want to join us there, Laura and I, 
there is a link to register. And also you and I are going to be on the Galactic Origins cruise in December to the Yucatan. And I've never also been to the Yucatan. So I'm very excited about that. And you are speaking on that cruise as well. Have you done this before or is this a first time for you? Not this particular route. Um, no. So I'm just like, wow. Belize, Honduras. Oh my gosh, Yucatan. I've been to parts of, yeah, the Yucatan, but not this particular area. So it's going to be incredible. And uh, I, I updated my website so you can find that link on my website or that uh, banner. So, yeah, that'll be very, very cool. Indeed. Absolutely. And so, Laura, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams or goals? Gosh, well... I just think building community is really important. I, I feel just all of us coming together and just really understanding um, just what it's going to take to to come together and, you know, unity and harmony and mutual love and respect, despite our differences, to really move beyond any kind of divide and conquer, to begin to just really dismantle any programs, any old belief systems, anything that really stands in the way, and to really work on healing. Um I just feel that the driving force in me just wants to heal, repair, and love and support, um, you know, every soul and myself in, you know, our growth and development and remembrance of all that we are and all that we came here to do and uh, and where we might lose uh, our, our footing, uh, that we assist each other in coming back and that we take the higher road and we just have love and forgiveness and compassion, understanding what we're up against and not getting caught in these, you know, lower traps. So my dream and vision is that there'd be a lot of healing and a lot of coming together, um, a lot of growth, a lot of joy, a lot of celebration, a lot of pooling our resources together and supporting and helping to fund, you know, building, you know, healing centers and, and, uh, you know, homeschooling and, 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 and buildings, uh, that, that, you know, can house, um, you know, our children and people that, uh, are recovering from, you know, all sorts of traumas and just, just the whole rehabilitation of, um, humanity supporting all the projects and manifesting, you know, our own soul mission and what we feel called to do and networking that and connecting all the dots amongst each other so that we can starve this inverted system and put our attention on the rebuilding and doing it on our own terms um, while we, yeah, just really support one another in, you know, overcoming all the challenges that this inverted matrix has, has, has brought. So lots of different healing tools and modalities, lots of, you know, amazing things that, you know, people have to share and offer and just being a part of that, being a part of this greater conversation and just in all love and respect. Um, yeah, just, just seeing, you know, more positive developments on that front. And I know your website is cosmicgaia.org. And where can people find your book? Well, you can find it right now on Amazon. I'm going to be ordering a case so I can sign copies for you. But right now it's on Amazon. Just put in the bar awakening to the truth frequency or put in my name, Laura Eisenhower. You can get it on Amazon. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll see you really soon. Yes, absolutely. And I end today's show with this quote, within each of us lies a universe waiting to be explored, a cosmic journey of self-discovery and infinite possibilities. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Next week on the show will be my friend, Lori Ann Spagna. She's a best-selling author, energy worker, ascension guide, and animal communicator. And she radically changed after a near-death experience, as well as an abduction, induction, contact experience while living in Maui. I look forward to that conversation. Remember to dare to dream and remember all the beautiful questions that Laura asked that you can be asking yourself in order to heal at the deepest level. Remember to dare to dream.